Hey, everybody. This episode of Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Feels CBD. CBD isn't what you feel. It's about what you don't feel, like stress, anxiety, or pain. Uh, you know us. We're anxious, guys. I am all. I was having an anxiety attack in Portland. I could have used some CBD. Oh, yeah. You know what it is? Day one of being completely isolated, I love. I go to the bookstore. I read. The next day, I'm like, I need some company. I'm freaking out. I was having jitters. I had to call my uh, whoever, uh-huh. and uh, I started to freak out, so I could have used some Feels CBD. If you got anxiety, you got trouble sleeping, you got stress, I'm sure you all do. Who doesn't? Feels is a premium CBD that will help you feel your best while keeping your head clear. Feels knows that everyone is different and that finding your right dose is important. That's why they offer a free CBD hotline to help you find your perfect dose. The Feels customer service team is dedicated to making sure you get the best use of CBD. It naturally heals, reduces stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. Tell them how to get it, Marcus. Woo-wee! Start feeling better with Feels. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash Tuesdays, and you'll get 40% off your first three months with free shipping. That's feels.com slash Tuesdays to become a member and get 40% automatically taken off your first three months with free shipping. Feels.com slash Tuesdays. Feels a better way to feel better. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up! And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Alright, here we are! It's Tuesdays, folks. Good to be here. Chuck's on the ones and eights. Chuck D, Chuck E. Cheese, Chuck Nice, Chuck Woolery. Oh, yeah, two and two, coming back. Was that a good enough uh, space in between the start? I mean, we literally were like, that guy should eat a pile of shit. Hello, we're here. I mean, like, is there going to be enough? As long as you can cut. All right, cool. Yeah, good point. The the, the, the Tuesdays will be a buzz. I wonder who it is. Is it yeah, Shelby? Is but it's it about the, that. It's gonna be which one of us is he talking about? Uh, I'm getting a lot of this on stage. Uh, all right, you get, I do a little Q&A at the end now. And sure. they go, uh, where's Joe? That's the first question. Where's yeah. Joe at? Joe List. They don't even say where sometimes. They just say your name. Yeah, that's all I get. When I'm fucking my wife. She's like, where's Mark? And yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I haven't talked to him today, but um, <laughs> I'm going to get shirts made that say, I don't know where Mark is. Would you buy those? It's fun. That's I don't a know hot if it's shirt. fun for other people. I would buy that. It's a hot room, by the way. Is it warm in here? I think. Well, I'm wearing layers because it's cold. I busted out the winter coat. Isn't it sad when you I, bust out the I winter did the coat? Same thing. Oh, it sucks. Yeah, but I've cracked the window, and uh, hopefully the breeze will come. I noticed that. Hopefully my father will come on my face. Uh, it's going to be back in studio. I know. I keep asking every Christmas. Yeah, uh, this year's the year. Santa can't bring that down the chimney. Worse on Hanukkah because you get eight eight loads in the face. Did Santa have kids? Did he never fuck Mrs. Claus? There's no Santa kids. Well, I think with all the midgets running around, you don't need them. You can't say midgets. Elves? Elves. Of uh, course. Yes. What are you, crazy? Sorry. Well, he's the one with slave owner with all these uh, little people. It's a good point. Oh, no, get out of here. Midgets is cool. I'm friends with a little person, and midgets is not cool. None wow. of them are cool. They stink. I don't uh, know. Maybe they're complaining. We just don't hear them. <laughs> um, anyways, I don't want to sink to their level, but <laughs> we got to... That's a small world. We got to we gotta get it going here. I mean, uh, well, what are we doing? Don't short me on that joke, man. It's warm, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Chuck is here. Chuck Knobloch. <laughs> I don't know. The cat is scared of Chuck, so who knows what will happen with the cat. Uh, you're not going to want to hear this, but I'm getting some negative cat feedback. Really? A few people were like, it's enough already with the cat. The whole oh, show is about the cat. Okay, great. Great. Yeah. We don't need it. Don't fuck with cats. Because uh, and then I'm, st- I'm getting shit from people. Some lady gave me the finger. We talked about this already, but people were like, you better be nice to that cat. Cat. So you can't win. Now people, enough with the cat, and you're being too mean to the cat. You, you can't, you can't win them all. But I like this. You understand the cat doesn't understand language. I'm not being, I'm not kicking it. Right. I'm making jokes about it. Yeah. Between the two of us, only one has hidden its toy in an impossible to get to place, which you might look at as teasing. Yes. But, you know. But you know the cat. 
yeah, sometimes you're verbally abusive to the cat, but it doesn't know English. So but I, I say the N word all the time. You've been quite verbally abusive. I just say, hey, you're, you suck. You're a fucking asshole, a piece of shit. And that's to myself. In sure. The mirror. Well, yeah, the, the cat doesn't. It's fun to flick it off. That's one of the perks of having an animal is you can be, you can say racial slurs and horrible things to it. It's fine. Yeah, I'm getting the cat heat, but uh, you give it the finger, and it's I don't even know where it is. It might be dead. I saw it through the window from the street, which was oh fun. really? Yeah, well, now there's the cat. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, I'm worried because it's a screen on that window. I'm worried one day I'll just fly right through that puppy. Pull a Clapton. Yeah, boy, he's in some hot water. They hate him. Really? Yeah, he doesn't like the vaccine, so all of a sudden, and then he said some racist shit back in the 70s, so wow. he's out. People Who hate didn't? Clapton. I mean, everybody said, I think the president was racist in the 70s. Oh, absolutely. Those are great tapes. Great tapes. Oh, Nixon. Nixon, yeah. Yes. We got one of those goddamn Jews in the office. No more Jews. Wow. Except he's saying, you know, the K word. Oh, he did? Oh, a bunch. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, did he get an N in there? Uh, we got I think an N in later. Might have a couple there. N's. Okay. I think there was a few N's. All right. We had an N do two terms. Well, <laughs> this is this this is hotter than a pistol. This episode, right, we got to really right. we'll clean s- it up. I got a film coming out for God's sake. <laughs> well, I think we got enough backlogged uh, offensive shit that this episode won't really. Won't really cut the mustard. We got a lot to get to, by the way. Yeah, we too got. Much. I mean, Skank Fest. I was in Portland. You were in Boston and uh, L.A. L.A. I mean, what? This might be like a twofer. This is like a very special episode. If it was lot a sitcom, to talk about. Saw you last night. Where do we night? start? Yeah. I mean, oh, we, last night was a we, special we, night. We could end it all on on last night. If we could somehow. Do what a do nice we, little, uh, what, what's the arc? Oh, arc Norman. Arc. But do, should we open with last night because it's fresh and then go work our way to Skankfest? Mm. Well, you missed a lot of Skankfest. I missed all. I watched God. every clip. I was on a plane. I was in Boston going, oh, what else? I was checking your stories, his stories. It was tough. I mean, you were really missed. Everyone says they miss somebody, but you were actually genuinely wow, really I'm missed touched. because. You're the guy you want to be there. You appreciate it. You know it. You love it. It's a festival. I mean, everybody's there, and it kept being like, where's my... It felt like you were dead. Oh, hey. Well, it's nice to know what happens when I die. Yeah, like nobody Twain. gave a shit, but I did. Ah. I cared. All right, all but right. But it was hard, and of course, I mean, literally all day. He's not here. He was here Thursday, and people were mad because... We squeezed in a pod, but I think yeah. the festival hadn't officially started yet. I think yet. you're right. And so people were like, I bought tickets for the festival. Yeah. Because Tuesdays with Stories was here, and it's not here. Right. And I was like, we were here Thursday. And he's like, but that wasn't the festival. So it was a whole, Lewis really fucked everybody, I guess. It was the hardest thing I ever did, getting on a plane at 9 a.m. at the Houston mm. airport, leaving Skankfest, and I'm walking out the hotel with my bags. I'm hungover. Uh, it was a crazy night, and Lewis is out there smoking weed. He wakes up at 5 a.m., this guy. He's a fucking farmer, and he's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm leaving. He's like, what? He couldn't even wrap his head around it, and I was like, all right, I got to go, and I got an Uber, and I left. It was it was, felt like leaving my kid. No, it was, was we- sad. What, what was weird is um, because Thursday was still early. People were arriving Friday, so as you were uh, leaving, everybody was getting there all day. You're just like, Soder gets here. Paul Verzi gets here, who I only saw once, but still, it's good to know he's there. Ran was Josh there. Josh Potter, Ran Azizi, of course, uh, Ari, Lewis, Jay, uh, who else? Bob Saget, Doug Stanhope wow, was hanging out Gilbert. all week. Uh, Gilbert Godfrey was limping around. I mean, it was quite an affair. We should name a, a woman or a minority. Adrian uh, Appalucci was yeah, there. The, and the, the, the guys we fucked chicks were there. Oh, I Corinne love They're a great hang. Great nice hang. to see Good Corinne, eggs. Christina. Very attractive ladies, I might yep. add. Uh, Good looking ladies. If I wasn't gay, who else is there? Uh, Sarah you had, you had was Brian there. Brian Moses. You had Sarah. You had uh, Bobby Kelly. Oh, yeah. That was great. Great hanging Hitch with him. Cliff. Mike Suarez, Tony Hinchcliffe. Uh, Shane Gillis, fun group. Oh, Gillis was there. We had a great time. We watched Steel Panther, the 80s band. They do a oh, big wow. That was a fun night. It was me, Soder, Shane, Bobby, Suarez, and having a great time just trashing the band. They did this thing. They wear all these big wigs and pink pants. They look uh-huh. like an 80s band, but they do joke songs. Yeah. And a few covers. They did. The guy talked for like eight straight minutes. Literally, no exaggeration, 
an eight minute rock talk between songs. Yes, uh, that think the they're worst. being funny. No, and we were booing, and then Shane's yelling, you know, "Let's go, Brandon," or whatever that thing is. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. He's yelling that, and uh, we had a good time just trashing him. And then we kind of came around on him, which was fun. I started a mosh pit, which yeah! was exciting. Bobby shoving me into other people. There's just fans everywhere, which was so fun. Somebody had the great joke. It's it's amazing that in Houston, eight people died at a concert, and it wasn't Skankfest. Unbelievable. I mean, there was a huge <laughs> trampling situation, but uh, we had no problems. And I just want to say, Lewis has created the best American it's comedy festival. Unbelievable. And, and we've been go. all of them. They should do a campground next year. I think they could do 10,000 people at that thing. They could Not do a campground, ten, a uh, fairground. Uh, fairground, yeah. yes. And do it for 10 days. I mean, it was too quick. I know I was only there for two days. But, <laughs> I mean, 10 days. Well, somebody's going to OD, but uh, or relapse at least, silent relapse. But... Get it longer. Get it because I, I left and I, I looked at my phone. Lewis is on a Clydesdale. Ari got <laughs> dosed. You guys are at a roast. Uh, Shane Gillis is is crowd surfing with Doug Stanhope. Sing. I'm like, ah, what did I miss? <laughs> I've never had FOMO so bad. I'm a FOMO sexual. I mean, it was insane, and the fans were so nice. Shout out to the fans, the Tuesdays. We've created such amazing fans. I love the yes. gays. They're so. Pleasant. They yeah. just—they know how to talk to you, and treat you, and none of them's lingering and stuff. And they're not too fucked up. And when they are, they're like, "I'm all fucked up. I'll right. see you when I'm sober." And everybody was just so nice and friendly. And there's a million jokes about how, like, "Oh, we're all gonna get raped, and the women aren't safe." Right. Nobody could be nicer. Sarah's no, like, "I no. feel so safe and welcome here." Totally. And uh, it was just beautiful. By the way, there's about a hundred jokes about how they all live in their mother's basement. And I'm like, I think everybody flew here and is staying at the Hilton for three days. <laughs> I know. I think I eighty percent like, of the people flew in. Yeah. Exactly. And the Hilton, by the way, downtown Woo! Houston Hilton. What a hotel. Lunch. Fast elevators, comfy beds, big rooms. We recorded a podcast there. I mean, this is the festival, and there's no industry. They hate it. They hate us, whatever. They're clueless. But Cowards. I mean, this is a party. And if you're at home next year, if it's in New York or down south, Go, go to Skankfest. Go. You gotta go. I don't care if it's in Darfur or uh, Somalia or Flip, Michigan. You gotta go. Uh, Stanhope had a funny joke. He was on stage. He's like, you know, there's some co- a lot of people I don't know, a lot of people I don't remember. I drink a lot. He's like, but you don't want to mistake random women for comedians at this festival. He's like, I'm at the hotel bar going, are you here for Skanks Fest? That was funny. He was great. Good to see him. And yep. just and, and uh, the, the the box, there was just constant shows yeah. going on in there. You fucking killed in there. Oh, thanks. That yeah. was fun. That I was blew fun. off my last spot. No one seemed to care. <laughs> I did the roast. It was like the set of my life. You killed it. And then it. they're like, you're in the box at 9 p.m. And I'm like, I, I don't think so. No, I'm done. I'll see you later. I hit the highway and get the hell out of there. Leave on a high note, baby. But I mean, that it, it felt like a rock star in there. We were getting pops everywhere we went, which was exciting yeah but that did. roast I, it was on youtube i don't know if it'll be back on youtube i think they got sued by uh whatever yeah yeah papa gino's but if you can get your if you can get just your set up on the tube holy hell this guy ripped it and rocked it i mean i was howling in a hotel room in la going <laughs> laughing at the soda chokes the ari chokes you killed it fatty it was fun it was a lot of fun and by the way ron on hirschberg and jp mcdade wrote a bunch of jokes really contributed those guys are you want you got you need some laughs you need yeah. a, if you get a show you sell something to roast a movie a tv show whatever it is you want it punched up you call jp J.P. McDade, you call Ron on Hershberg. These guys swoop in. Yeah, funny guys, and they need the work, for Christ's sake. And J.P., he was good. Ron on fucked me a little bit. He worked for Bobby, that piece of shit, and uh, whatever. But J.P., McDade, who you guys should all check out his roast stuff, his stand-up stuff. Funny guy. He was like an employee the day of. He's like, you need any more help? You want to jump on the phone? What else do you need? It just felt good. I was like, I got plenty of ammo. It was like one of those things where you... Uh, you you're like someone's like you stay at someone's house and like can I get you you've done enough right right go right. home relax yeah yeah take a breather but it showed it paid off I don't know what you paid these Jews but man did they uh, they do a great job not much ah perfect uh, it's a win win but, but it was good but it was it was nice because you get these compliments about the jokes and you're like please be one I wrote yeah ah, I wrote that one all right thank God but uh, it was oh, very shit. exciting but. What? I'm just worried. I, I've complimented you on eight jokes. I hope one of them was yours. Yeah, most of them. Well, about, All right. About 60% of them ah, were mine. Ah, you're clean. Yeah, most people, they didn't write one thing. Yeah, I noticed. Jane but, Gillis. Uh, <laughs> Shane was amazing, by the way. Killed he it. fucking killed it. So funny, but I was so nervous. I'm tr- just trembling in the back because you got all your buddies yeah. right there. And we're sitting there waiting to go on, and it's like it's Shane, it's Ari, it's Bobby, it's Soder, and then you're about to annihilate each other, but everyone's so anxious, and we're like, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. Yeah. Why do we sign up for this? We should just be hanging out. Let's all bail right now. Yep. 
And you're just, my leg was like shaking. Oh, I get it. It's one thing to bomb on TV or while you're fucking your mother or uh, at the cellar, sure. which all sucks. Yeah, been there. But bombing with all your peers yes. next to you and you just respect these people so much, or Shane at least, the rest of them I could, whatever. But yeah. I mean, you just go, oh, I want to do well. And then it's standing room only. There's 2,000 oh. people. And then every single comic is crammed yes. right here. Yes. Like in your little vision box, there's like 150 comedians right I there know. like doing this. And you just want to kill. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I don't know if the regular folk, the civilians out there know that. But even me on a headlining set in the middle of Tom, Dick, and Harry, Denver, wherever I am, my feature will come out and go, I'm going to watch you. I'm like, this guy sucks. He's a hack. He's a he's an open micer. But I'm like, oh, there's a comic in the room. Right. And that's one comic I don't give a shit about who I'll never see again. This is peers you've known for 20 years who are killer comics, who are all headliners, who are great acts. And they're watching and judging. And you got to kill for the audience. And they're going to make fun of you. So there's all these horrible elements going against you. Yes. It's just really anxiety inducing and you never tried the material either that's the main thing with a roast is you're doing every joke for the first time ever yes and you're always like do i have enough ammo do i have enough and it wasn't until like an hour before that i finally was like this is enough when you start doing it through your head right right you're like no this is a lot of jokes by the way the time went out the door they're like we'll light you at six everybody did like 12 minutes never never does who gives a shit i got to go first which is the best spot on a roast (laughs) it's just the name of the documentary by the way Uh uh-huh just remembered uh there's a great moment. He's got another great quote, one of my favorite quotes ever. He goes, I always get these calls to come and throw out the first pitch at a baseball game, and I say, not unless I get to throw out all the rest of them. <laughs> That's a Beautiful. good line. He said, I'm not going out there like some hack cause. He goes, I like playing, which is great. Won't throw out the pitch unless he gets to play in the game. He's like, let me pitch. Oh, he's wonderful. L- right. Hours on YouTube. Great doc. Anyways, oh. wonderful. Could be. Oh, oh, yeah. tough, tough little. Need that space there. Horrible for an Asian person to say. Oh, but, God. All right, we'll clean it up. But, uh, yeah, that's great. The roast was great. You killed it. You never said the jokes before, but they all worked. And the, the, every time you have to do a roast for a comic, you have you know you have five stages of grief. Have you heard of this? I'm familiar with the grief. Yeah, yeah. I think you have five stages with a roast. Somebody goes, you want to do a roast? You go, sure. You regret it. Then you go, this is stupid. Then you go, how do I get out of it? And then you accept it, and then you write the jokes. Yeah, good point. Then you die. Then you die. Life's uh, a bitch. Yeah, it's fun. And some of the guys didn't put in the effort, which I don't understand. I don't understand the thing of signing up and being like, ah, I'll think of something. I mean, I get it, but it never works. And you always hate yourself after. You got to do the work. It sucks, but it's the only way. And it's the only way to leave without killing yourself. Yeah, it was fun. It's a it's a fun feeling. And then going first, I had a nice big cigar and just sat in the back and just enjoyed it. Hell yeah. Which was great. But then the pressure started to get that nicotine in you. And then you start doing the thing of like, is he mad? And you're like sitting behind yeah. the guys. I'm like, is he upset? Is he mad? And yeah. then you're like, does everybody hate me? Is this okay? And then you just have a meltdown. Ah, you're fine. A couple and, people uh, did seem a little cunty on the, on the mic, but... Uh what are you going to do? Uh, but it was awesome. And then as soon as it ended, after all that skank on you, skank fest, uh-huh. and, you're, and you're, it's nice to say hello to everybody, but you're just stressed and you're, you feel that pressure of yeah. talking to people and you've got to be on. Then Sarah and I got in the car and just left the hotel, Ooh. jumped on the highway. I stopped at Wendy's, Silent Re, don't even worry about it, stuffed the double cheeseburger up my ass, went back to her place in uh, the suburbs. Wait, you didn't hang? After the roast? I hung for about a half hour, but once it's over, I'm like, I'm out. Wow. I hit a wall. Elvis? I was done. I mean, every first of all, at that festival, as much as I love the festival, everybody's on acid, everybody's on mushrooms, oh, everybody's yeah. drunk. And if you're not partaking, even if you are partaking, who wants to talk to somebody on acid? True, and it's a silent relapse uh, phenomenon over there. It's like it's extravaganza on relapse. Like I don't know. It's all booze and drugs and I mean, pussy. It's why, and the thing is about drunk people even when i was a drunk i was like i hate drunk sure you're just repeating themselves they're like what what is it what you say and then everybody saturday night everybody was on acid or mushrooms and then some people were on coke and acid and you're just like i mean i'm on a different planet here i might as well get out of here so ari got dosed speaking of acid i know i was on the show oh yeah that was in the middle of the roast it was fucking great and i appreciate kim congdon king kong because 
I was sitting next to Ari, and it was when he was on stage. She was like, do not drink this water. It's ah. filled with acid, which I appreciate because you're smoking a cigar. You right. got dry mouth. I would have just pounded that thing and lost my tits. Imagine if you were on acid that night. Holy shit. Oh. That would be a showstopper. But it's awkward, too, because it's like Dumb and Dumber. I'm like, how's your burger? Because I'm sitting, I know uh, that there's acid in the cup. Right, right. And by the way, now I'm complicit. Like, I'm committing a crime. Ah, what are you going to do? A it's small crime. Fest. Yeah, what are you going to do, yeah. I guess, but... But uh, still, and I think he only drank a small amount of it. Ah, damn, it I like, wanted him to be out of his mind and, you know, shitting blood and you know, puking. Well, she came up and was like, Ari's on acid, which was such a great moment. Yeah. But I looked and the bottle was like two ah. sips. And I was like, ah, as, as great as a moment that was, is like, you should have let him finish it before. You got to put a pile of uh, cashews in front of him, something to get the thirst going. Well, he had a cigar. There's ah. nothing, nothing more thirst inducing than a big, fat, brown Black dick. Cock. Yeah. Yeah. You got that right. Damn, um, that's a shame. I don't know how you do it with the stogies, man. I uh, I had one on Rogan, and I it gives me anxiety. My anxiety goes up with the nicotine. The nicotine is insane. I mean, that's what, by the end of the roast, I was like having an anxiety. I hadn't eaten because I was anxious before. Yeah. So I was like, really, that's why I got out of there. I was like, I need to like go be with my wife in pajamas and like spoon. I hear you. Come back to the gay earth. Spoon man. Yeah. Um, been there. <clears throat> well, it sounded like a hell of a fest. It looked like a hell of a fest. Did you crowd surf? I didn't get to crowd surf. Yeah, I've always wanted to do that. I saw everybody doing it. It looked pretty great. I crowd surfed the year before, and then Bobby Kelly did. I don't know if you saw what? that tape. That was the Brooklyn one two years ago. We did You Know What, Dude. I dove in the crowd and did a lap, and then I came back, and Bobby's like, me next. I thought he was kidding. It's oh insane. My, I mean, talk about a Travis Scott. I mean, <laughs> that Bobby's going to crush some people. I mean, it was wild. By the way, this year's You Know What, Dude, when that goes on YouTube or whatever, Ooh. get on. I was, I've never been more on fire really? in my life. Never killed hotter ever in my life. Packed room. I mean, it was insane. That, that Skypass was the best weekend of my life, performance-wise. Yeah, you were rolling. Maybe because you were the only sober guy in the in the vicinity. Yeah, it could have been, but I and felt uh, it was fun. The funny too. Yeah, thanks. Whatever. All right, but yeah, great time. I didn't want it to end. Lewis, I've never seen Lewis be happier. Oh God, he was on top of the tits. Yeah, and uh, just a good. Oh, Karen Margolis, another lady who was there. He killed on the roast, by the way. Lewis. Lewis did great. He did about an hour and a half, but he killed it. Zach Amico killed it. Just a great time. I hated to leave. But uh, I also knew if I stayed, I might do a uh, special K or Oxy or some shit. So I had to get the fuck out of there. It was weird. And like I never did acid. So it's weird because you're like, everybody's on acid right now. And I, in my mind, acid is like, whoa. And like there's Pink people elephants like, I saw shit. Josh Potter and he's like, oh, I love that you love Matt Wayne. I'm like, you know about Matt Wayne on acid? Like in my mind, oh, you take yeah. acid and you don't know who Matt Wayne is anymore. No, that's all movie shit where they're like, oh, I'm falling down a hole, and that's all bullshit. It's 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 it's, it's like being shit faced. Like I'm like I was like, hey Josh, it's Joe List. He's like, yeah man, what's up? How are you? Yeah. And I was like, all right, I thought my fucking nose was dripping off or whatever. No, no. They think it's like a Dali painting, but it just gives you a bunch of energy and you're all keyed up and excited and fun. It's a chemical. On acid? Yeah. That you sounds see like some, coke. See a little tracery, but it's 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 more. <laughs> You're locked in. Ah, ah, maybe I'll do acid. Let's do acid. Ah, I'll probably Patreon. <laughs> Get on it. That would be a forty dollar Patreon. Oh yeah, it's just us sitting here. <laughs> you have to uh, bail me out of prison when I rape everybody. That's how I used to do things. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, that sounds like a bad trip. But uh, yeah, good time. Bean Town was great. Yeah, tell me about Bean Town. You're up there. It's hard because when you're in Skankfest, you're in like a vortex. You're not even yes. getting any outside world news. That's true. I mean, it was just a great time. We do. We did a bunch of shows. It's a nice club. There's good eggs over there. A lot of a lot of Boston gays came out. Sold some shirts. Took a million photos. I'm not supposed to do meet and greets, but I can't help it because I feel guilty sitting in the green room. Why are you supposed to do them? Well, people say COVID and anal oh. and AIDS and all this stuff, but I was like, I got to do them. Yeah. Uh -huh. You do them. Yeah, I didn't know we uh, were. I didn't know we could not do them. Uh, yeah, well, you could say ah, COVID makes me nervous. All oh, right, but I think COVID's over, right? Uh, Ari has it right now. What? Yeah, maybe he got it from the acid. He got it. Uh, he has it. Sal Volcano was fucking crushed. He was sick for two weeks, and Veter lost like ten pounds. I can't even recognize. He looks like he has AIDS. Holy shit! Yeah, so be careful out there, kids. Oh damn! Well, now I'm uh, nervous again, but. When you do Rogan, he gives you an antibody test, mostly so he can shame you that his are better. Right. But uh, we, I, do? I had pretty good antibodies. Oh, wow, okay. There you go. Which I don't know what that means. Yeah, I've been taking vitamin Dizzle in that emergency. I put that in my ass every morning. Ah. So uh, so far, so good. But 
Hey everybody, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Raycon. The best gift you could give a loved one is to just shut up every once in a while, but you're not going to do that, are you? So why not give them the next best thing to drown you out? Raycon wireless earbuds. These things are awesome. I know you wear them. We're loyal oh, Raycon yeah. customers. They got killer sound. I was listening to Exile on Main Street as I walked up. Good one. Sixth Avenue earlier and got accosted by crazy people. I had to turn them down because the sound is so good. I couldn't hear the people coming. It's killer. The audio quality is amazing. Just what you expect from other premium brands, but half the price. With seamless Bluetooth pairing and a comfortable noise isolating fit, you can start listening right away and keep listening for hours. Raycon offers eight hours of playtime and 32 hour battery life. That's unbelievable, Damn, Mark. Yeah, that's a lot. Hell yeah. Over a day. You oh. know. I love them. I wear them all day. I listen to them at night. I go to bed with them. They're great. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays today to unlock exclusive deals up to 20% off your Raycon order. But hurry. This offer is available for a limited time only, and you don't want to miss it. That's buyraycon, B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N.com slash Tuesdays to unlock up to 20% off your Raycons. Buyraycon.com. Slash Tuesdays. Get on it, folks. You got to do it. Tuesdays of Stories is also brought to you by Green Chef. Eating healthy can be hard. It's so hard for me. I don't even know how to do it even a little bit, especially mm. in the winter, by the way. It's all a hassle. Finding new recipes, searching the store for ingredients you'll only use one time, fighting with your partner over how much salt is a pinch. Mm. We've all been there. Green Chef takes all that trouble away. Every week, Green Chef sends you new recipes with over 30 meal choices every week and the flexibility to switch plans. You'll always find a nutritious meal that tastes great. Everything they send is pre-portioned, so you'll never worry about planning or shopping for dinner again. I love Green Chef because, again, my wife and I, I'm, I'm a picky eater. I eat like crap. They send you healthy stuff, and it's all set. You know what you want. You know what you need. My wife whips it all up. It's easy to do, even for her. <laughs> No, it's yeah. so fun. It's easy to follow the recipe. That's the key to this. Yes. Some of these recipes are difficult. This one is easy. My lady and I love cooking together. It's a great way to spend time together. Green Shift saves time. It's a great for gifts, too, by the way. Green Shift shows up right at your door with everything you need. Mark, you've used it. You like it. I love it. Helps uh, keep the relationship going. We get to flirt and boob touch while we're cooking. It's good stuff. Tastes great. Feels good. Go to greenchef.com slash Tuesdays125. You got that? Use code TUESDAYS125 to get 125 clams off, including free shipping. Holy moly, what a steal. That's G-R-E-E-N-C-H-E-F dot com slash TUESDAYS125 and use code TUESDAYS125 to get 125 smackers off, including free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Yes, sir. One more ad or a uh, sponsor, I should say. And these guys are the best. I'm wearing them right now. It's all I wear. I said goodbye to jeans forever. Tuesdays with Stories would like to welcome Public Rec. We've all got that pair of sweatpants we can't bear to get rid of. You know the one. The drawstring has been missing for years. That stain on the ass keeps growing and the hole in the crotch is showing a little too much. It's time to upgrade to big boy sweatpants. That's why I love public rest athletic wear meets leisure. I mean, I don't even look at these as sweatpants. I wear nah. them out every night. This is like formal wear to me. I wore them on the roast. I'm wearing them right now. I wear them everywhere. Jeans are so uh, crunchy and yeah, whatever. Constricting. These are like sweatpants. I could work out in these. I wear them as slacks. They're the best. I bought three pairs. They sent me a pair. They're supposed to be sending us more pairs, I believe. Versatile. I wear them anywhere. I work happy hour, the gym, anywhere. It's made for all sizes. It's got the best selling. You know what I like about these pants? You type in your measurements. They fit perfectly. They That's the really hardest do. thing for me. I'm long. It's hard to get pants that fit. Long and lean. I'm These short are, and stubby, and they still fit me. Fantastic. These are made for relaxing, plus public rec like make shorts, tees, jackets, and even golf gear for men and the ladies. Look sharp while being comfortable. Tell them, Mark. You got that right. Public Rec rarely discounts, but right now they have an exclusive offer just for you gays. Go to publicrec.com and use code TUESDAYS to get 10% off. That's publicrec.com and use promo code TUESDAYS for 10% off. Get them now for the holidays. You're going to love them. I mean, what better ad or promo do you need than this guy's Johnson is touching one right now? Get on it. Because he's my butler. Yeah, so here's the clinker. 
I got some, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this, but I did, I had to go to LA. Mm-hmm. It all worked out. I'm doing Brea Improv, which is a suburb of LA. Right. Never heard of it. Uh, but I got some gig because a guy pulled out of game show. Okay. And so they called me and they're like, hey, can you host this? So I had like two days notice. I said, I'm in. It's a pilot presentation of a game show. Basically, you shoot a couple days, they package it, and they send it to a network to pitch it. Uh huh. So it's almost like a pilot kind of thing? It's a pilot, yeah, but they needed a host. I see. And it's, it's this hardware game. It's basically like chopped with hardware. Hardware? You know, like uh, chop, they go, hey, here's a dildo, a butt plug, and a Guatemalan kid. You got to make a chopped salad. Oh, okay. I never yeah. saw chopped. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't it, care for the things. It, you wouldn't like it, but it passes the time. It's decent when you're yeah. on acid. Okay. So it's that, but they go, here's a twig, uh, you know, uh, clan hood, and a uh, taser. You got to make a, a recliner or whatever, you know? <laughs> so... It's like food. It's like chop, but with 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 building. It's like MacGyver. It's MacGyver. It's a MacGyver show. That's good. Yeah, put that in the pitch if you want. I like that. I like that. That's an older reference, but you know they'll catch it. I think it's back. Isn't there a new MacGyver? What? I think it's like a teenager that's MacGyver. What else are we gonna remake? The Holocaust? I feel like we're just redoing everything. I think they tried to do that. Oh, did they? Yeah, a couple people. Damn, Small I missed that group. movie. Yeah. Oh shit. All right, I'll invest. That uh, could be a hit. <laughs> um, I'm joking. But. Well, yeah. um, all yeah, right, so, so you got a MacGyver show. So tell me about it. So it's kooky. They fly, fly out first class. So I'm wow. going now. I'm going to L.A. on on United Polaris. Polaris. That's what they call their. You know, they got mint. They got whatever. Oh. They got Polaris. Get out of here, Polaris. Hey. Just call it first class, you douchebag. They gotta have a cool name. Oh. It makes it fun. What is it? A car? The Polaris. Yeah. Ugh. I think that's actually that thing that goes around the pool that cleans it. I think that's called a Polaris. No kidding. Give that a goog, I've Chuck. never heard of Polaris either. You know that thing that goes around the pool, and you're like, what is that? They go, it's cleaning it. You're like, I don't think it is. It's just whipping around like a slave owner. Oh. What is that thing? I think that's a person. Polaris. Polaris. Is that a, is that a I Greek a star. god? It sounds like a star Maybe a or something star. like that. Yeah. But yeah. I think that, what's that pool thing called? It's a star in the northern circumpolar constellation of Ursa Minor. Ah, oh. uh, Ursa Minor. She was hot in the 40s. Oh. Is it? That's what I'm saying. I never saw the thing that goes around. No, it's got a name. Yeah, Jose. <laughs> it's a manufacturer that does pool cleaning. All right, there we go. I'm not crazy. All right, so Polaris. So they, wait, what they had to they had to make a Polaris? What happened? What was Polaris? I can't even remember. That's the name of the first class. All right, first Polaris class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th- I was thinking they needed to make a Polaris for the pool out of because that's a good topic. Oh. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Take yeah, uh, exactly. an elephant tusk and a shoehorn and a table. There you go. And make a Polaris. Yeah, good luck. Uh, maybe I could write for the show. Probably. You got the MacGyver thing. You got the shoehorn. <laughs> you're mean, in. All right, a flat screen, a candle, and a plant. There and you, you go. got to make a podcast producer. I'm not great at improvising. All right. So uh, it's kind of scary because you're like, okay, I got to go host this thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm the backbone of this show. I'm the host of this show that they're hoping gets picked up. Right. So it's a lot on your shoulders. So I'm like, all right. So they send you on a plane. You got a day to prepare. I'm on the flight going like, this is all this copy. You know, I'm reading all of it like, oh, God. You know, do you want some more uh, more chocolate? I go, more everything. All right. We're in the Polaris. I'm laying down. I'm in that weird pod, you know, cast. And uh, it was just a magical flight. But I had to read all the shit. You land. You go straight to a hotel. You got to land. Get a rental car and drive out to Ventura, California. Yeah, I hate. I, this, you know what the worst thing is in all of travel is after you've landed and trying to get home or to hotel. It's That's that it. period. That's it. Because when you land, you have the relief of like, all right, I'm off the plane yeah, finally. But it's just started. It's just started. I, I just had it yesterday. It's just it's brutal. It's brutal and. The flight was delayed. I was supposed to get in at like 8. We got in at 11. Then you got to rent a car. It's the little things about travel. You know where you go, okay, I landed. Now I got to get the rental car. So you have to go out, wait for a shuttle. Oh, is that the Hurt? No, that's yep. the Avis shuttle. Oh, that's the whatever shuttle. Oh, that's the other one. That's the Emerald. Okay. Oh, there's the Hurts. Then you chase the Hurts. It's that part of travel that nobody talks about. You know what I had that was the best ever? I did Conan one. I did it twice, but one time in this story, they sent a car. 
But I didn't realize that because I'm an idiot. Uh-oh. And so I rented a car. Uh-oh. But no, it was great because I came down. And there's a guy in a suit with my name holding a placard. It says Joe List. And I go, hey. And he's like, I'm your driver. And I go, oh, hey. He's like, I'm taking you to the hotel. And I was like, I didn't know I had a driver. I rented a car. I got, I'm here all week. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'll, I'll take you to the car. Ah. So I came downstairs with my suitcase and a guy in a tux fucking drove me down the street to the rental car place. That's it. So I didn't have to wait for the shuttle. So that was nice. That's nice. See, the little things. So then you get to the rental car, and then everybody runs out to try to get there first. You get there, there's a zigzag of a mouse maze of 800 people. So you're like, ah, you did a six-hour flight. You waited for a shuttle. You get to the place. Now you got to wait through the line. It's a whole thing. Get your car. Drive an hour to Ventura. Check in the hotel. That takes a uh, oh. twenty. That, that we talked about the click clack. We've been doing hotels for eight hundred years. We can't get a just here's your key. Boom, you're done. Don't you always find? We've talked about this before. I know. I'm sure. Don't you always find like you're the fastest person all day, especially in bed? I talked about this in Houston. I'm waiting to get in there, and you just want to check in so bad. You want to fuck. You haven't fucked in a month. Yes. And it's just every person because every they all go up there and go, "Where's the? You'll find the pool. Uh, you don't need them to tell you. Are there any the good pool. restaurants? Just fucking ask Siri. Yeah. Walk out the door until I you know. see a restaurant. You douche. How about this guy? Anything good around here? Hold on. They pull out a map of the city, oh. and they you're here. They always circle yes, the X, circle and then the they pen. draw all over. You're like, what do you got a swastika on this thing? Just get me up to the room. Well, people love to circle things. They love I circles. I love circle. I circle all the time. If there's anything, if there's a pen yeah. in the thing, I circle. Crop circle. I'm all about circling. Hey, shut up out there. We're doing a podcast. There you go. Oh, shit. I think he heard you. Yeah, he's yelling back. Oh, jeez. Just podcast. kidding. Podcast. He sounded... Uh, Tuesdays with stories. You know. Yeah. Got it. Road game. So uh, get up to the hotel. Now it's midnight. Call time, 7 a.m. So then you're like, all right, I'm off I'm off kilter, whatever, whatever. I still got to look at the copy. I got I to gotta go to bed now, and it's all... It's 3 a.m. in America or whatever, New York. So finally, whatever, you get there, and you drive to the set, and it's the set where they did uh, Mythbusters. Oh. So that's kind of fun. Oh, yeah, I like that so you're guy. Like, okay, that's some history here. And it's a real show. A million cameras. There's teams. You got to meet all the teams. I what? mean, this was heavy duty. This is TV, baby. What kind of team? How many people on the team? There's two people on each team, three teams. So you meet wow. six people. It's like a husband and a wife, a guy and a friend, two sisters. And do you have the card? Do you have a little card where you go? I got cards. I got, oh, I got a teleprompter. But it's heavy because it's a lot of stuff. You can't fuck up. They're like, we're on a tight schedule. We got to have lunch by this time. So we have to nail this shoot. And they're building shit. And I got to go, 30 seconds left, team. 30 seconds. I'm, I'm that guy. I'm wow. all in. Wow. This sounds fun. Sorry about my belch. <laughs> it was wild. But then you got you to gotta have jokes. They, want you, they hired you because they want you to be funny. And then they tell you to be edgy. And I went too edgy. And they had to reel it back, you know. But uh, just yeah. great you, time. Network game show is going to be a tricky one for you. Tricky dicky. It's going to be a lot of cutting. Whoever's editing is going to have oh a hell of a God. Time. Yeah, it was bad news. Bears, I did a lot of like uh, one guy had a chainsaw. I said, circumcise me. And they're like, woo, 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 woo. Cut it, cut it. Let's dial it back. You know, all that shit. I mean, I just don't see this. No, the Epstein jokes they didn't care for. I mean, I mean it really went to, went to shit. I had a couple of Kyle Rittenhouse things they hated. <laughs> but uh, either way, we well, had some good laughs. You, know, you hear like the crew and the grips like, Jesus Christ. And that's always fun. Yeah. But uh, they don't care for my humor at the end of the day. But I got hope for this, though. They can, edit- they can work around the cut. They if it was a live around. show, you'd have no chance. You'd be out. out. There'd be idiots for auditioning you if it was live. But if it's taped, you know, you get to say the things and the people go, oh, because the people that are there, they're never upset. No. It's the people at home in fucking wherever in the, you know. Uh, Midwest. Not even the Midwest. We always think Midwest, but I don't think it's the it's Midwest the anymore. Coast. It used to be the Midwest. The coast Now it's elites. like people in West Seattle going, ooh, he said right. something off color. Exactly. Or whatever. Exactly. It really switched. There's a big switcheroo. Big switch with the offended. It used to be the pearl clutch in uh, religious right. Well, don't, don't get me wrong. Actually, now that I'm thinking about this, 
they're all offended still because the right is always they're always offended too. Right. You made a joke about Jesus that all ah, dropped good point. their shit good point. Whatever. Abortion, whatever. Yes. Or if you make any crack about Trump, they go, "Oh, look at this yeah, fucking guy." Yeah, well, like, everybody's well, a snowflake about their bullshit. Yeah, you know? it's all snowflakes. So I fuck have a them great too. sense of humor. I love jokes. What about that one I did about the retard? Oh well, my cousin's uh, retarded and he's half gay I and know. he works at Chick Fil A. You're like, all right, I can't just cater my act to your fucking bullshit retarded family. Yeah, they're just as bad. All right. Anyways, anyway, so we get through the two days of shooting. I mean, it's just rigorous shooting, mm. and uh, it makes you realize how much you love stand up. Of know? course, you're yeah. like, I could leave here right now, tell some jokes for an hour, kill, high five, get a paycheck, and jerk off. And nobody's gonna tell you what to do. Nobody. This is like. Guy comes back up with the clipboard. Can we take that again? You got to do this. And you got to act like, make eye contact with everybody. Don't just look at the tell, you know. And I get it. He's right. But it's just a lot of work and a lot of memorizing and a lot of just tap dancing. So we do it. We get in the can. I think it went well. And then they go, all right, you're done. Jump in the car. Drive to Brea. It's a good hour and a half away. But you're just like, all right, I'm going to go do stand up now. And I check into that embassy suites. Brea is just a mall town. It's yes. all concrete, no beach, no nothing, no culture, no fun. But uh, the shows were great. The club was great. Good times. I wish I had more about it, but it was just great. Yeah, one of those ones just goes well. It, it was a perfect club. I made the most money I've ever made at a comedy club. Wow. And because uh, I, I lucked out because the, the L.A. gig uh -huh. was supposed to happen during covid and then it got pushed back, so then more tickets are allowed to buy. So you keep uh -huh. the people who bought originally, and then you add over oh, a year. Ooh, that's so, nice. Pretty good. Juice. Yeah, so e. I guess from now on, I'll book a gig and then do it three years later. Really sell it out. Yeah, well, I think the people, you, you built the fans is what you built. Mm. You didn't build the ticket sales. You built the people. So the people will just be there next time. If you build it. You know it, what I mean? Yeah. So... Flew in yesterday, dropped my bag off, went right to PS10 Anal, and uh, here we are. But I, I think I think you had some stuff. I got some stuff. I mean, wait, hold on. This is one of those weird things. When Chuck is here, I can't see Peter. I don't know how what time it is. Oh, Where yeah. are we? I'm lost. Oh, all right. All okay, because right. we, we, we got to know what's going on. Do I have a lot of time? Do I have a little time? You know what I mean? It's, I'm, I'm a time guy. Don't you feel like that with I comedy? You're like, you got to know what time it is. What time's that? How much time am I doing? Yeah, there's a big clock in the back of Brea, and it's like, ah, I know I, I know exactly where I'm at. I yes. know much more to go. It's great. I found when I was in Portland, they have a digital clock, but it's like up here. I you saw that. that. Yeah. I did some act out where I was like, you know, getting blown by my cousin. And sure. I'm like, this, what? The clock's up here? Oh, yeah. What are you doing with the clock up there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyways, yeah, PS109, I'll get to, but uh, there's so much stuff. Let me just go right into the, I always want to talk about this travel stuff. We have so many things. Have you ever had this? By the way, I, I flew all first class the last couple weeks. Me too. I'm about to hit Diamond. I'm, I'm $2,000 away from Diamond, so I'm buying all first class. I'm just buying the upgrades. It's the girl's best friend. I mean, Diamond. I never thought I'd make it. No, it's big. Diamond's That's big. making it. I mean, Diamond. You get on the plane first. You get upgraded on everything. Oh, you get yeah. the lounge or some other shit. You're Who pushing cares? pushing old ladies out the way. The wheelchair guy tries to get on. You put a broomstick in the wheel, and you... Get on first. You can fuck any ticket girl you want. Yeah. She doesn't need to work at Delta. You can fuck a Southwest yes, douche. Yes, that's comfort. Uh, but I had this. I flew to Portland, and a couple fun things. First, I flew to Salt Lake City, layover in Salt Lake City. I get the first class upgrade. I was pretty sure I was going to get it. I keep checking compulsively oh, yeah. to see there's two upgrades left. I'm number two. Woo! Then he gets his, and there's one upgrade left. I'm number one, and it's like the clock is ticking away. And then, right as they, they give you, they do the upgrade when it's boarding time. As soon as it's time to start boarding, that's when they give the last upgrades. Right. Away. So it's boarding time. I keep refreshing. Boom, I get first class, and I'm next to two guys that were like, yeah, one guy was in first class, and his buddy's like, I went up there. I tried to fucking pay to get the upgrade. They said it was not available. But the screen says there's one ticket available. Ooh. And meanwhile, I'm the guy that got it. So you're like, right next to the guy. That's awkward. But I'd already gotten it. And he's like, he's like, I don't get it. He's like, fuck them. He's like, I offered to pay. He's like, I got money. He's doing that thing where he's like flexing, as they say. Ah, the flex. He's like, I got the money. And I'm like, why don't you just buy first class initially? Ah. You don't have the money. You didn't say that. I didn't say anything. Okay. I'm, just, I'm overhearing. You're hoping you win. 
I did win. This, oh. I've already been upgraded. Oh, okay, so great. So that's what I know. He's like, why can't I get this ticket? This is bullshit. The system's rigged. I am. But I'm sh- standing there being like, I got it. I'm shocked that they wouldn't take the money over upgrading some nobody. Well, because I'm not a nobody. I'm a well, fucking. Well, yeah, I guess you're diamond now. I'm, well, I'm platinum, about to be diamond. Like, uh, all the miles, whatever. I, I, I did well on the road, so I think they wanted to upgrade me. That'll do it. I think they saw it. But anyways, so I get upgraded. I'm in seat 5A all the way to Salt Lake City, and there's. Four women in front of me, two in this row, and I'm behind them as we board, and they're annoying as shit. They're mm. just loud and all oh, just cackly loud, having a party, having yeah. a good time, can't stand them. One of them goes, people, people don't like flying. They say they don't like flying. I find it relaxing. I don't get it. And I just want to be like this. No, you don't. You're trying to be different. Right, Shut right. up. Relaxing? Yeah. Flying's relax. If you fly private, maybe relaxing. Sure. There's nothing relaxing. You're standing in line right now. Yeah. We're boarding. It runs out of overhead space. Yes. You got to put your belt on. It's noisy. They come around. They make a million announcements. Yeah. Nobody's relaxed on a plane. No, no. It takes five hours. You're stuck here. You can't use your phone. It's a bummer. There's 150 strangers in there. Yeah. The toilet smells like shit. It's like rocking like yep. this. Uh, what are you talking about? We're all farting. The Taliban. It sucks. I hate these people. They got to try to be like, I like flying. It's relaxing. It's not relaxing. Maybe you like it. Whatever. What are you, a fucking yeah. special needs kid in the 80s? You don't like flying. It's no. not relaxing. Fuck yeah, you. Put the wings on that whore. And then you get the, the, I like cold pizza. Yeah, yeah, we all like cold <laughs> pizza. You're not interesting. Blow me. Shut up. It's like, we've talked about before the people that put the fries in the burger. Ah, Ooh, ho, ho, I'm putting the yeah, fries in the get burger. Get the hell out of here. But anyways, it's not relaxing. So I already hate this woman. Now they're sitting in front of me. The woman in front of them is friends. She sits like, you're going to shit. You're going to spit water oh, all over the place geez. and take your pants off and shove it in Chuck's mouth. She does this. As soon as we take off, sits like this, 100% of the flight, talking to her friends. Oh, wow, you got crazy. That's crazy. And so I'm sitting here, and oh. i got to have a woman facing me. Oh. I can't nap. I can't watch a movie. Just I, imagine. I can't handle it. How good was this right oh, now? I hate every minute of it. I oh. mean, it's insane. That's brutal. Four and a half hours straight of this fat what? bimbo douche. I mean, she never turned around. <laughs> what? And you want to nap. You want to put your hood on and nap. But I can't sleep with a woman facing me. And I'm watching a movie the whole time. I'm just doing this. Oh, my God. She pulled an AC Slater on a Delta yes! flight. I wanted to take her face and smash the fuck out of it. I'm wow. like, turn around. This is so rude. That's rude to be facing the opposite way. I'm sorry. It it's is. brutal. Sorry. I got a little semen That's on the drip right. there. But holy hell, I've never heard. I've flown every week for the last 28 years. I mean, that's a, that's your 9-11. A hundred percent of the flight. It was like Costanza. It's very effeminate. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't believe it, but I, it's just I could not exist and I just, I hated her more and more. Oh. I couldn't, you can't do anything. There's just a face facing you, the and fucking douchebag. So there's a lady next to you, and she's talking to her. No, no, no. The, the lady next to me was cool. She had a huge rack, by the way, which oh. never happens on a plane, I think. Good times. But she was just whatever. This lady's not even involved. She's a regular whatever lady. So who's she talking to? There's these two ladies are facing this way. This lady's two rows in front. Oh. I'm in 5A. She's in 3B. Talking to 4A and 4B. And your passenger had double D. Yes, exactly. I see. Massive cans. Okay. I just kept like uh, being like, hmm. But anyways. <laughs> um, Can we get a seatbelt extender? That was the only savior. But I just, the face the whole time, that's the whole story. I fucking hate oh, it. I'm with you. But, that is a nightmare. But they were also drunk and they, they got drunker. And then the uh. woman, how about this? You know, we throw the language around there. But in public, I'm a, I'm a gentleman. She's talking. She's like, but I told her you're a fucking cunt. Wow. She said fucking cunt. I'm like, Man. what are you insane? Who fucking raised you, you fucking animal? Yeah. Who fucking got you? A, cunt. Who got her a first class ticket? This coos. I don't know what's going on. They sound. You know what it was like? It was like Goodfellas, the scene of the wives. I'll told you. Oh, I'll, I'll cut yeah. your fucking hand off. <laughs> yeah. She spends her life in a nightgown. That's right. what they were of the same. They were Long Island. <laughs> yeah, ladies. I see. Yeah. I know the ilk. Bad exactly. makeup, big yeah. hair. Yeah, the blue shit on their face, yeah. like Braveheart. <laughs> but uh, anyways. Wow, what a nightmare. You want first class to be enjoyable, then you got a backwards coos. It was brutal. Also, the talking, because you can't, as loud as you can go, you just hear that like. Yeah, blah, 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 yeah of blah, course, blah, of blah, course. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it was awful. But then, how about this? This was interesting. I never had this in my life. This is just a fun little note. I get off the plane and have a, a, a transfer layover, whatever they call it. What's that called? Connection. A connection and to get from Salt Lake City to Portland. 
I get off the plane. You always had that thing where like, where's my gate? I got to figure it out. I got a 30 minute thing. I walk off and I'm like, it says gate A19. And I'm like, all right, A19. And I'm like, wait, this is A19. Okay, uh, wait, uh-oh. that's the wrong. So I switch and I'm like, A19. Uh-oh. A- I'm at the gate. Oh, Have you ever had that? That never happened. I landed at the gate that the transfer is. And then I realize it's the same plane. And then uh, I'm waiting for an upgrade, and the seat available is 5A. I got upgrade again. Same seat. Uh, wow. Double 5A. Jerry's apartment. That's right. Wow, that's amazing, because I'm usually, you know, you get to Atlanta, and you're like, I'm in E9, and I got to be at A4, and you're like, gee, I got to take a tram, a trans, a uh, transition, Caitlyn Jenner. I'm all over the place, and you start running like home alone. Kevin! Yes. You, know, you got your luggage. You try to beat the clock. Brutal. Yeah, but this was this was nice. So I went to Cafe Rio, got a nice burrito, went over, landed in Portland, and what a time in Portland, by the way. I mean, Great that club. club is killer, and Great so club. many Tuesdays, and I was worried because you were there two weeks early. But they all came back out. They got nothing to do. They were so thrilled, and uh, it was nice. Derek was supposed to come down with his kids and hang out, but the kid got Joey, little Joe, got sick. Ah, He shit his pants a couple times. Make a wish. And uh, so he didn't come. I went to Powell's Bookstore. Spent three hours there. It's a cool store, huh? It's the best. It's just the best, but... I made a move on the lady in there once. It was exciting. Oh, really? Well, there's so many nooks and crannies, you can really... Slipper a bookmark. Oh, you go to that erotica section. It's Woo! quite delightful, which Forget I did. Forget about it. Hardcover over here. I went up there. I spent the whole day over there. And, and But that city, we talked about this last week. We got to, these cities got to get control of the homeless people. Ah, I'm sorry. It's bananas out there. It's like a monster movie. Walking and, Dead. And the heroin is just open. Streets. It's right crazy. Out there. And that, the hotel's not in the great place. It's not like a bad neighborhood. It's just, it's like a. It's a bad neighborhood, but not a bad neighborhood. Right, It's just a shitty neighborhood. It's just boring. There's nothing to do. It's kind of a bummer over there. There's nothing going on. Yeah, it's it's very gray and rainy. And I would say that my opener in Portland was like uh, the homeless situation is out of control, but REI is killing it because it's all tents. Yeah. They all have fucking backpacks on and travel gear and little like uh, cooking things uh, on a pan. Crazy. I think it's all donated and they come and they give Ah. them, they, they, they help them out, but then... It's just crazy people in the streets. And I went over to Starbucks across from the hotel. And because of COVID or whatever, they don't let you in. All these places. Yeah, they're bad out cut there. Cut corners that they didn't want. It. Like my gym doesn't have towels anymore. Right. They're just like, ah, right. eh, COVID. COVID. You're like, that doesn't even make sense. You just yeah. don't want to have, you don't want to clean the towels, you assholes. I, I can't get blown. She's blaming COVID. <laughs> it's brutal. It's, it's, coming to, uh, it's coming to the home. Blovid. Um, 19. You're old. <laughs> so... Oh, don't you miss those? But anyways. Oh, good times. So, like I, I said, that, like I had a bunch of 19-year-olds in my life. I had one 19-year-old, and I was 20. Ah, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's one. That was a fun noise. Ah. Uh, what was I talking about? I went to the, Starbucks. The hobos. Oh, yeah. They don't let you in, so you got to stand out line. I feel so vulnerable. And, of course, you know, a toothless fella yeah. comes over. He's like, blah, 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 blah. And I go, yeah, what? Uh and he just they just linger because you're linger. Wait, I'm waiting in line, so I can't just keep walking. I have to let it linger. So we're just sitting there, and finally I go, all right, I got a few bucks. I, I go in my pocket, and I'm doing very well. So all I have is a fistful of 20s, mm, and good I go, movie. Uh, ah, here you go. I give him the 20. What? Because I'm like, I want him to leave me alone. He can't make change either. And then I was, well, first I said, well, I can get you a bagel and a coffee. You want a bagel and a coffee? He goes, nah, I really need uh, arrangements or whatever the fuck, uh, blankets or whatever the fuck. And I was like, oh. well, why don't I get you a coffee and a thing? And he's Crack. like, I really need money. Crack. And so I gave him a 20 and I, he goes, you know what? I will get a coffee and a bagel. Oh! So then he gets in line. What? He got in line, not in front of me, behind me. So he gets a coffee and a bagel. And I'm like, I would just give you a coffee and a bagel. Now he gets a coffee and a bagel plus 14 bucks, this guy. Oh, I hate this guy. Well, whatever. He seemed nice. And then I felt bad because he's, uh, you know, after a while, he was, the lady's name was like Mahilda. And he's like, oh, I bet your family's from Germany or the Netherlands. And that made me sad because I'm like, oh, this guy's like smart. He's right. just fucking lost his shit. Uh, I wonder if it's dementia or just an addict. Well, he's missing all his teeth, so I assume it was some kind of acid uh, or whatever. How's he going to eat the bagel, I wonder? That's tough. I think it's soft. You just chew it with your gums or something. Ah, uh, the old gum job. Gum chew. Gum shoe. Hmm. That's something. Yeah. Yeah, Portland, it's, it's, they're rampant over there. Speaking of drugs, though, I will say, L.A., I got handed. I get handed drugs every now and then by the crowd. Yeah. I got handed more drugs in L.A. than anywhere else. Yeah, I was saying this to, in Portland. 
I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like you're not like a drug guy. Not the biggest druggie, I mean, but they come in handy, you know, at a party. Sure, but they act like you're, uh, you know, Stanhope or Kurt Cobain. Right, I'm like, I right. see you. Like, I feel like you, you do a lot of exercising and writing. That's and, true. You, yeah. You know what it is? I think they uh, they want to give you something. They want to be, and they they got the drugs, and they go, this is fun. Well, yeah. It's a handoff situation. It's and fun. I, I think when you do drugs, you tell a story. Yes. It's a good story. So they're like, oh, he likes drugs. But yeah. I'm like, I don't... It's funny because all these people are like, Mark, with the drugs, you got to talk <laughs> know, to him with I the know. drugs. I'm like, I know him quite well. I don't think he's got a drug problem. He's got abs. No drugs. I mean, the Green Hulk thing, I think. That was bad. Interest. That was bad. Won't happen again. But they're like, you know how I, we just give him, he gets fistful of drugs. And I'm like, what? You should give him like, you know, dumbbells and uh, <laughs> joke books or whatever. <laughs> Maybe, uh, you know so what tough I mean? to travel with, but yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I got a lot of mushrooms and weed. So it's, 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 uh, you know, minor shit. It ain't, it ain't uh, you know, heavy duty narcotics. But I will say, I've been flying with these mushrooms, not noticing it, and I'm just going through security, like, oh, I got like illegal shit in my bag, but a lot of contraband. But hey, haven't get, haven't gotten caught yet. Contra fucking band. That was a oh, bad that line in Departed. That's right. It's that's not right. Great. Yeah, Departed's got some holes in it, <laughs> and uh, Nicholson really overdoes it. It's but. got some real stickers. By the way, I'm rewatching American Beauty for Joe and Ron on Talk Movies. That movie is straight up bad. I loved it when it came out. I liked it when it came out, but I was 17. I mean, it is yeah, one bad. best picture. It's also. bad news bears. Well, everybody in um, hindsight started trashing it. Ah, uh, well, but what's, it's not good. What's the flaw? I mean, I don't want to get into Ron on's territory here. But, I mean, uh, I just I'm I'm 10 minutes in. First of all, it's so fucking cartoonish it's so on the nose and what would be better is if i mean I, they're gonna hear this again if they listen to the other podcast but it should be nobody a guy doesn't want to fuck a high school kid like this uh, he's doing that and then he's right. like uh, uh do you want to ride i can give you a ride i mean i don't know if you have a car right. it would be more subtle because you don't should be get like, busted exactly yeah. there's repercussions to trying to fuck a teenager That's a good point he should be like this and you want to come over or like the movie happiness do you ever see that movie oh it's that's like, dark bam, that movie ruins american beauty because it's like so dark and fucked up and it's real it's so yeah. authentic this movie and like annette benning's like i don't have plants i could get plants why don't i get plants like they're just right, playing it for comedy right. it's so fucking goofy and silly and uh it doesn't hold up great but and he doesn't fuck the girl which is a little off-putting i mean he's literally sitting there like this yeah and you're like that's how and patrice had that great joke about the tsa guys smelling your shoes like a straight face how guys can keep a really straight face oh yeah but inside they're like yeah you fucking nasty feet i'll eat your asshole yeah that's the thing about men and women they hide it yeah you're talking to a woman you're just thinking about you know eating her out on a sunday all day long but you're like hey you want to get a coffee or something like that yeah that's, that's real life that's real life yeah, no one's like oh, look at those titties yeah. whoa <laughs> Well, that's when I do acid. But, but um, it, you're right. It's true. It's it's definitely a little too uh, cartoony. It's a little too over the top. It's, it's spoon fed. Yes. And then he's like, I got to get a Mustang, a 60 or whatever, I a know. Charger. It's all, yeah, you're right. It's on the nose. And the, and, the, uh, and the guy's like, I filmed a bag and it was crazy. And then she's like, I want to kill my dad. And you're like, do you? He doesn't, he doesn't seem horrible. Or he's anything. not that bad of a guy. And they're like, we're the couple that's fighting. She's the unhappy Why? She fucks the guy, the obvious guy that is the king of real estate the Gallagher yeah and it's just all right hey uh, good point the homophobic guy is gay right right Whoa. what a twist by the way it doesn't hold up either like it's funny how gay has just so changed so, like in the beginning he's like these are my neighbors Jim and Jim hmm? right and they're just like two regular gay guys yeah like I'm not offended, but you are like that was like a joke in 1999. Joke. He's like, look at this, I got oh. a couple queers next to me. Completely, yeah. I mean, Will and Grace was just this giant gay parade of like homo flamboyant guys. Like, I'm getting shoes, and the crowd's like, yeah, get those shoes, homo. Woo! He's and really gay. Yeah, exactly. Even the guy Will was friends with Grace, and he would be like, I got some action last night, and the crowd would laugh. And yeah. you're like, well, he's gay. He fucked a guy. That's, <laughs> right. that's what they do. That's not funny. Yeah, it's really uh, uh, fun and angle. silly and whatever. Anywho. Yeah. Anywho, what a week. Things are cooking. We got gigs. We got road dates. We want you to come say hello. We got uh, new shirts. Where's Mark? 
So oh, yeah. things are cooking. You gotta get those available yet. You gotta get those made up. Um, you got about one day to get them cooking. I'll get them cooking. Wait, what was I gonna say? The Patreon's big, by the way. We got the episode coming up this week from Oh Skankfest from app. Skankfest app is going up live app. And the uh, Royersford app with Shane Gillis Woo! is up. The Skankfest app had uh, H Foley and uh, Ian Finance, uh, Kevin Ryan. That's his name. Are uh, you garbage? We got the Are you garbage guys? We got Ian Finance. That was a killer app. Went a Good little app. long. Uh, but couldn't, couldn't really wrap it up, but we uh, there's some pearls in there. Royceford was amazing. We shot a hot gay sets last night at PS 109. Oh, hey, Chucky's on it. Um, so a lot of good stuff. Wait. Yeah, we had Soder, we had Louie, we had uh, Hagen, me, you, the butler, the other guy. It was the same, TJ Miller. Oh, Miller popped in, yeah. Uh, Matt Wayne, that was great. Good to see Wayne. Another weird thing on the plane with a guy next to me was doing like an aggressive wipe down. You know, like, oh, the light. like he had that. his own thing, and it was like crazy. And he was a young guy; he was like doing this. And then I felt bad because I, you know, we talked about the trick. You bring a coffee, so you can just have your mask down the whole time. Oh, that's you're good. Like, I'm, I like the coffee, so I'm like, he must hate me, right? I mean, I'm picking my nose and touching the thing. He probably thinks you're some alt right Nazi. Don't you always feel this way with the germ people? I always am like. Let's count how often more you get sick than I do. I think about that every time. Like, how much better are your chances? I know, I know. And you might be making yourself sicker. You don't realize it because you're killing your immune system. But my big, I I try to play ball. I wear the mask everywhere. I I do all the bullshit. But uh, the one protest, the one time I push back is getting on a plane. They go, here's your little dumb wipey. And I go, I'm good. I say the same thing. Do you really? No, I don't want it. Because they don't like that. They go, what? You don't want it. It's like the AIDS ribbon in Seinfeld. They're like, who doesn't want to wear the ribbon? Who doesn't want to wipe down their shit? It's a waste because I fly 14 times a day. So I'm like, I, it's too many things. I, I care more about the environment than the fucking Ooh, the COVID. Yeah, that You're little, just handing me shit for no reason. That little jizz rag. They don't uh, biodegrade well, I'll tell you that. It's like the Hedberg joke. It's like, you throw this away from me. Exactly. I'm, like, I'm just going to hand this back to you when you come through with the trash. Right, right. Or I'll put it in a little fucking vanilla folder back behind the seat and never see it again. Exactly. Same like with the Biscoff cookie. It reminds ah. me of the Seinfeld. You do me a favor, hold on to that one. Get rid of the Biscoff. That's a doorstop. It's a brick. It should be put on a shelf and never looked at again. I hate the Bisque. Nobody wants a Biscoff. I mentioned the Biscoff. Um, but yeah, join the fucking Patreon. We got, uh, like I said, hot gay sets. The other thing coming out. A bunch more stuff. We got a studio coming. We're, we're, we're renting a studio. We're going to start shooting some stuff there. I think we're going to try to grab another bonus here in a second we're kicking it up a notch folks you got to get on it uh all kinds of good stuff all kinds of old stuff too just backlog is bananas on its own so uh get cooking get gay and uh queef it up where are you gonna be three bucks by the way you can get on there for uh Best i am deal. gonna be chicago this Ooh-wee! weekend come on out pack it out chicago it's a big market i was supposed to be there in march august of 2019 and then oh. i was supposed to be there uh, god knows when getting the covid bump so please come to that zanies this weekend get your tickets and it'll sell it's a small room berlin i cannot believe oh. how many people it blows my mind i talked about it on here i've gotten 50 emails the tickets are already half sold out whoa in like four hours so if you one of these people that wanted the link Go get the tickets. It's up in my Insta stories. It's on my Twitter. You can find it now. The ticket link is up. Get them stat because we're, I don't want to add a second show. It's going to be jet lag, the whole thing. So no, it's going to sell no. out. So do it. Go there. I can't wait to hear about the German gays. This is going to be wild. There's so many. I mean, I got more responses than any gig what? in the States. Well, you never go. You're never going to go again. I mean, it's great. The, the Berlin Wall. Bill Berlin. Berlin is, is big. So, Build uh, that wall. Berlin, December... 11th, I think it is, December 11th. And then uh, next weekend, Providence Comedy Connection. That's like a hometown gig, uh, the 26th and 27th, Thanksgiving weekend. Come out to that. And uh, oh, and then, oh, Cleveland. One nighter in Cleveland, December 1st, Wednesday. One night only, Cleveland. Steamer. Yes, come to that. Hilarities, best food ever. One night. Get the tickets. <laughs> that's it. One folks. show. Coming and going. All right, that's it for Get me. on it. I'll be in Vancouver this weekend. We had a show on Thursday. Come on out. I never come to the BC. I'm excited about it. The Coove. Uh, oh, Canada. My then home. New Orleans for Thanksgiving. Hometown hero. Coming back in. Let's sell that puppy out. If I don't, it's going to be embarrassing in front of my parents. Then I'm at Royal Oak, Michigan. 
Atlanta, Buckhead Theater, and wow. Charlotte Comedy Zone for two nights, yeah. and Milwaukee Improv, brand new room. Woo. I'm excited. I love Wisconsin. It's going to be freezing cold. Go Packers. Fudge pack my ass. Go pack Joe. That'll do it for us. Praise Allah. Thanks a lot. Queef it up.